Hello you lovely cubs, this is Wranglord here, back again with another video. This is the re-upload of part 1 of uh, What If Izuku Reincarnated as a Slime, or THAT TIME IZUKU REINCARNATED AS A SLIME. Anyway, big props to Noah Stories and Mephisto, uh, we're collabing on this series, and I said this last time. To go check out their links in the description, of course, last time it was only Mephisto, why did Noah all of a sudden join in on this? No clue. Or at least you guys get no clue. Anyway, <laughs> moving on. Yeah, just like, subscribe. Go check out their links in the description. And yeah, show them some love. Join the Discord if it's still up by the time. And yeah, let's get into it. Sorry, kid. It's not gonna happen. The doctor said as he started explaining why Izuku couldn't become a hero. The boy rather stared blankly into the distance. His dream of becoming a hero and saving people's lives was crushed in one sentence as he couldn't even hold back his tears. His mother tightly hugged him as she apologized, saying that it's her fault for not being able to give him a quirk at birth. It's not your fault, Mom, the boy wanted to say, but he was still in shock and the words didn't want to leave his mouth. Whilst he was still flabbergasted, the doctor continued saying that Izuku had an extra joint in his pinky toe, which signaled that he was quirkless. Later that week, it came out to the kids that Izuku was quirkless. Hey, Deku, I hear you're quirkless. What a loser, a young girl with blonde hair would say. That's not nice, Kachan. I thought we were friends. Friends with a quirkless loser? Yeah, right, Deku. Bakugo would belittle Izuku as she laughed with her friends. This would go on for weeks until Izuku confronted Bakugo at the playground. It all happened when Bakugo was bullying a kid. Stop that, Kachan! Izuku would say as he held up his fists, getting in the way of Bakugo and the kid who was on the ground. Bakugo would spark her hand as she laughed, throwing a punch at Izuku. Izuku saw the punch, however, and managed to dodge it, throwing one of his own, hitting Bakugo in the jaw, temporarily disorienting her. The kids laughed at Bakugo after she regained her senses. She got mad and used her quirk, hitting Izuku, knocking Izuku out. Their parents eventually got called to the school for this behavior and Kasumi Bakugo got into trouble for knocking Izuku Midoriya out. Kasumi's mom got upset at her and grounded her for another month for this. Years passed after this incident and the two grew up minding their own businesses. Izuku was writing in his hero notebook when suddenly the bell rang indicating that school was over. As Izuku was putting his school supplies in his bag, Bakugo made her way over to Izuku's desk with her squad of goons. Hey nerd, what's this? shouted Bakugo as she grabbed Izuku's notebook from his desk with minuscule sparks shooting from her hand. Uh, hey Kachan, replied Izuku in fear that his precious hero notebook would be burnt to ashes. Bakugo then read the title of said notebook and started getting mad. What the hell is this, nerd? A hero notebook? Didn't I tell you to give up on that pointless dream, you quirkless loser? Shouted Bakugo as the sparks in her hand started increasing in intensity. I, I will become a hero, no matter what! Izuku shouted with a determined face as he sent a soft glare towards Kasumi. Bakugo's goons laughed as they started making fun of Izuku, however Bakugo just sparked an explosion in her hand as she threw Izuku's notebook at his face. Damn nerd, do what you want, shouted Bakugo angrily as she left the classroom, her goons following behind. <sighs> she acts like a jerk, but she's coming around slowly, 
Izuku softly said as he squatted down to pick up his notebook, slapping the small ashes off. She didn't have to burn my notebook, though, Izuku sobbed. He looked outside of the window. I should probably get home, he thought as he picked up his bag and slowly made his way out of the school. He walked down the roads as he looked around. Streets were bustling. Everyone looked so happy. Izuku took a turn into an alley as he walked down a different road. He had taken this road multiple times before. It was calmer and took a little longer to get home, but it was nice as he could clear his head in peace. He continued his walk, arriving under a bridge as he made his way through the sewer grate popped open. You're a scrawny kid, but you'll do. Give me your body, a huge slud villain said as he attacked Izuku. Izuku calmly dodged as his senses went to the maximum, easily dodging the sludge villain. The villain got agitated as he surrounded Izuku with sludge. This could be troublesome, Izuku thought as he tried escaping. He got distracted when he heard a loud bang as he got caught by the sludge villain. In just a few more moments, everything went black. Izuku slowly woke up. His face stung a bit. As he opened his eyes, there was All Might flapping his face and telling him to wake up. I do apologize for not seeing you there. I've successfully subdued the villain. You held out. Remarkably, young man, All Might said as he stood up straight. Izuku was stumbling on his words as he frantically searched for his notebook. However, All Might handed him an already signed notebook. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I will treasure it as a family heirloom, Izuku frantically said as he panicked. With that, I'll be moving out, All Might said. Wait, I still have so many questions, Izuku thought as he clung onto All Might as he jumped. In the air, All Might noticed Izuku holding on as he landed on a building. Before being able to jump away, again smoke would come off of his body. When the smoke settled, Izuku panicked. Where's All Might? He cried out, surprised that the skinny skeleton of a man in front of him spoke. I am All Might. This made Izuku almost pass out again. No, I really am All Might. Let me explain my situation, All Might said as he started explaining his wound and how he got it. He was surprised when Izuku listed off the fight in which the wound occurred. All Might turned around to walk away after explaining his situation, however, Izuku asked a question. Do, do you think someone like me could become a hero? He asked, shouting his heart out. All Might took a long look at Izuku. He did hold out pretty well against the sludge villain, and his physique isn't bad at all. Heck, he could probably use one for all with that physique. Uh, what am I thinking right now? All Might sighed. <sighs> You're a strong kid. Even without a quirk, you have an abnormal physique, so yes... I think you have a potential to become a hero or a hero sidekick, All Might said, leaving the rooftop first. Izuku gets a massive smile on his face as he cries out of happiness, hugging his notebook tightly. All Might, who is still standing on the other side of the door, smiles softly as he makes his way down the stairs. After a little while, Izuku makes his way down as he starts walking home happily. It's at that point that he hears an explosion. He makes his way over to see what happened. He sees a crowd of people looking at the alleyway. As he moves in to take a closer look, he sees the sludge villain from before. No way! Did the villain escape from All Might? No, there's no way! He remembers that he clung to All Might's leg. No, this is my fault, Izuku thought as he looked worried around towards the scene. It's then that Izuku sees Bakugo as Bakugo makes a hurting expression. Izuku instantly rushes into the scene as he screams. He throws his book back at the villain, hitting the villain's eye. It's at that moment that he grabs Bakugo's shirt as he pulls with all his might, as he's able to split Bakugo from the villain. Take this, you bastard! Bakugo yelled whilst blushing, sending a powerful blast to the villain that made the alley tremble. The heroes didn't stand still either. Now's our chance! Let's get him! Death Arms would scream as he rushed in. You two, get out of here! He would yell as he rushes past them. 
Kasumi and Izuku start running back to the crowd. Give me back my body! The sludge villain said, expanding past death arms hitting some of the buildings. Backdraft would stop him by using his quirk to knock the sludge villain back with his water. Izuku and Bakugo continue to run as the villain continued running amok, hitting the buildings around them. Hey, what are you doing, you damn nerd? Bakugo yelled as she got pushed. When she looked around, her face turned to horror. Izuku Midoriya had been crushed by a piece of rubble. Bakugo froze as she saw the blood running out from under the rubble. It's at that moment that All Might appeared. He had been watching from the crowd. He was inspired by Izuku's bravery, but he froze when he saw him saving the girl. I am so pathetic. All Might wasn't smiling right now. As he dealt with the sludge villain easily, as the sky turned cloudy and rain fell, All Might got on his knees in front of the rubble and the lower half of Izuku's body as he sat there in silence. Bakugo, who was now tearing up, was still on her knees, as she's trying to hold back her tears. The other heroes start chasing away the citizens and start covering up the scene. Where am I? Izuku thought as he felt like he was floating. Who's there? He asked as he felt lightheaded. Synchronizing system. System synchronization, load 1 complete, preparing load 2, load failed, 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 STOP! Izuku yelled as this voice rang inside his head. Load 2, unsuccessful, user has not yet met the right requirements. Who are you? What's happening? My name is... I'll be watching you from now on. To answer your question, you have awakened. Oh, awakened? What does that mean? It appears our time here is running short. I'll explain more the next time we meet. The voice said as Izuku felt a strong pulling sensation. Meanwhile, All Might and Bakugo were stunned as Izuku's lower body was turning into a blue liquid. His clothes disappeared and the slime grouped together as it turned into a blob. It moved around a bit as it even looked like an arm was trying to escape the blob. Izuku was waking up as he reached for the sky. He saw that his hand was blue and slimy. Would you like to assume human form? A voice spoke into Izuku's head. Uh... Sure? Who are you? Izuku said as his slime body started transforming. I am your skill, great sage, the voice replied as Izuku started getting all of his this knowledge about these skills inside of his head. Before Izuku could ask any more questions, his transformation completed as he looked to be human. His clothes were different as he wore a light blue winter cloak with fur on the lining on top, blue boots and black pants, but this body he was in felt like his previous body. All Might hugged Izuku as he apologized for his weakness. Izuku was confused and then he was asked many questions. Even Bakugo asked if this was Izuku's quirk and Izuku didn't know how to answer. I don't know. Everything's weird right now. Izuku spoke confused about the sensation he was feeling. The reporters who were watching rushed into the crime scene to ask questions to the heroes and both Kasumi and Izuku. All Might, however, was already gone after patting Izuku on the head. Izuku knew that All Might's time was probably getting close to the end. The pro hero scolded Izuku, but right after they praised him for the courage and his strong quirk, Bakugo got the exact same treatment. After the pro heroes left, the reporters kept asking Izuku questions, mostly gibberish like, Are you All Might's secret love child? To which Izuku didn't respond, leaving quite quickly when he saw an opening. On his way home, he tried asking Great Sage some more questions, yet before it could reply, they got interrupted. Hey, nerd! I didn't need your help, but thank you anyway, Bakugo said, turning around before Izuku could see her blushed face. She stormed off, muttering something about Izuku, but it was unclear what she said. That's weird, Kasumi never really thanked me for anything before, 
Izuku thought as he continued making his way home. He got once again interrupted by someone else. I am here, All Might said, rushing from around the corner before turning back into his smaller self, scaring Izuku half to death. Izuku stuttered, trying to talk, but before he could say anything, All Might spoke. Young man, you showed me the greatest of bravery today, to the point that you were willing to sacrifice your life without a second thought to save someone. I take back what I said before. You will be one of the greatest heroes to ever exist. I would like for you to inherit my quirk. All Might said, confusing Izuku. As Izuku had a dumbfounded expression, he asked All Might what he meant. My quirk is a quirk that got passed down to me. It's a quirk that has quite a lot of history and I would like for you to inherit it, as I will no longer be able to fight with it in the near future. All Might said, still holding his smile. Uh, I guess I could inherit it, but I think I awakened my own quirk today. Izuku was still confused about the situation. That's no problem. We can explore your quirk together, All Might said with a smile motivating Izuku to train. I'll give you my number, so you do the same, All Might said handing his phone to Izuku after exchanging contact information. All Might would set out, Izuku however went home. He got home but decided not to eat anything as he wasn't particularly feeling hungry. Man, today sure was eventful, he said as he fell on his bed. Would you like to be notified about your skills? Great Sage spoke. Izuku had completely forgotten about it for a moment. Uh, yeah, I'd like to know more, please, Izuku yelped out excitedly. Great Sage started naming skills and abilities. It more or less felt like the knowledge was flowing into Izuku's head at an incredible speed. Skills and their descriptions started popping up. Stop! Stop! Izuku yelled as it was getting a bit much. Great Sage proceeded to do just that. Izuku, are you alright, honey? Inko yelled from downstairs. I'm alright, no need to worry. Izuku yelled back, reassuring his mother. I'm sorry for the overload. Reassessing data, Great Sage would say as it became silent. This is all so much. I wish I could speak to someone about this, Izuku said as he sighed, holding his hand against his forehead. His mind was throbbing with knowledge that was a bit too much to handle for now. Assessing Master's wishes, initializing skill, shadow step, Great Sage spoke once more. Izuku's shadow expanded as a wolf crawled out. Izuku got scared, but the wolf bowed its head. I greet thee, master. Before Izuku could even process the question he was going to ask, he got answered by Great Sage. This is one of your subordinates, named Ranga. He is a Tempest Star Wolf and was residing within your shadow. Would you like to hear his skills? Great Sage asked, but got interrupted by Izuku. Wait, if you already have a name... Does that mean you had a master before me? Izuku asked, slightly disturbed by the word master. I do not remember. I only remember my skills and me waking up within your shadow earlier today, my lord. Ranga said, changing the title of master to lord, seeing as Izuku was uncomfortable with it. There's a lot to talk about. I should discuss this with All Might, Izuku said as he yawned. We should go to sleep. The next morning, Izuku got up. He woke up with Ranga lying next to him. He patted the wolf as he felt comfortable with Ranga around. As he made his way downstairs, Ranga followed him. Inko got absolutely terrified and was worried, but Izuku explained that Ranga is his friend and that he might be related to Izuku's quirk, which calmed Inko down a lot. She was especially calm when Ranga went into Izuku's shadow, showing that the possibility that Izuku had a quirk was quite high. Ranga exited Izuku's shadow as Izuku made his way to sit down at the table. That's right. Mom, could you make something for Ranga too? Inko got up right away and prepared something for Ranga. She seemed to really like Ranga already, and Ranga liked her too. After all, she had made him food, and it was quite delicious. After spending the morning talking with his mom, Izuku made his way out towards the beach. Takoba Municipal Park. It was a mess, garbage and waste all around. Izuku looked around but eventually spotted All Might. 
All Might, Izuku yelled as he ran up to his idol. Ah, young Midoriya, glad you made it, All Might said with a smile. I... I think I learned more about my quirk yesterday. Izuku spoke happily. All Might was intrigued right away. Really now, let's see what you can do. All Might spoke as he let Izuku show off his abilities. Izuku summoned Ranga and started explaining stuff like his great sage ability. After a moment, he even showed off a skill where his arm turned scaly with claws. All Might made the connection to beasts and monsters seeing as how Izuku summoned Ranga, but when Izuku summoned fire and lightning, he was completely confused about what Izuku's quirk might be. Young Midoriya, you said abilities right. Could it be that your quirk is related to a game or something of the sort? All Might asked, yet Izuku couldn't reply. He didn't have a genuine answer. Let's explore your quirk whilst we train. All Might said as time flew by quickly. Two months to be exact. In this time, Izuku learned many of his abilities. Acid Breach, which he wasn't fond of and All Might banned the use of. Magic, like fire, wind, ice, and so on. Black Flame and Black Lightning evolved versions of his fire and lightning magic. Furthermore, he could transform his body into that of a slime, create items by absorbing other items and letting his great sage skill do the work. He could enhance his thinking speed times 1000 and even his cognitive ability by combining one of his sub-skills of his skill called Predator with Great Sage. And so much more. It was around this time that Izuku was working out his body on the beach whilst All Might was working on some papers he had to fill out. When Izuku picked up a small fridge, the mountain of waste that was next to it fell over. All Might heard the loud noise and jumped over out of worry. When he arrived, he saw Izuku's right arm was caught under a massive pile of waste, probably crushed due to weight. However, Izuku's arm wasn't even attached to his body anymore. Izuku got up without making as much as a peep. It didn't hurt, furthermore his arm appeared to regenerate out of nowhere. All Might looked at this and thought to himself once more. If he has a regenerative factor in his quirk and one for all would boost it, then he wouldn't need to worry about his body tearing apart due to the quirk. All Might asked Izuku to explain his regenerative ability, which Izuku did. It's at that moment that All Might plucked one of his hairs out. Eat this! He said with a big smile on his face. Izuku's face turned blank as he looked at All Might with worry. It's the way you can inherit my quirk. You need to digest my DNA. Before Izuku did though, Great Sage spoke. Master, grab hold of his hair and we can use the skill Predator to eat it without you having to actually eat it, as Predator is linked to your stomach. Izuku grabbed hold of All Might's hair as it got absorbed by his slime hand. He could feel a change in his body. He had fallen asleep. You aren't ready yet. A voice spoke as Izuku woke back up, catching himself before All Might could. With the help of Great Sage and All Might, Izuku was able to grasp how to activate one for all before one hour had even passed. It was now that All Might really started training Izuku. He taught him how to use one for all in different ways. The fact that Izuku could use 45% without any real issue right away showed his great potential. He could even push it to 50% but it would strain his body, and if he pushed it to 65 he could still move while be using his regenerative powers at the same time. It was this kind of rigorous training that Izuku had to go through. Not only did he train one for all and figure out new ways to use it every day, he still cleaned up the beach like normal, using it as a body strengthening method whilst his body adapted to one for all. And he had to train his own skills on top of that. Eight months passed by in a breeze, and Izuku, who was now incomparably stronger than before, made his way into UA, the school he had dreamed of for years. He had a perfect score on the theoretical classes as his learning speed and the knowledge of Great Sage were too great to compare to any normal person. Furthermore, as he was walking, he was strangely calm. Hello, nerd, a soft-spoken voice said as Izuku turned his head to look as he saw Kasumi standing there. Hello, Kasumi-chan. Let's both try our best for this exam, Izuku said with a smile. He was calm and not afraid at all of Kasumi. Contrary, she had been quite nice to him since the incident ten months ago. Yeah, whatever, Kasumi said as she passed by Izuku with a soft smile entering the building before he did. 
Before Izuku continued, he got greeted by another person. Hello. Are you also here to take the entrance exam? A girl said as she looked extremely nervous. Um, yeah, I am. Are you alright? Izuku asked. He was strangely calm. It was probably the effect of Great Sage and his confidence in passing. The girl kept talking as she walked alongside Izuku. Strangely enough, as their conversation continued, she seemed to become calmer and calmer. Eventually, they arrived at the explanation hall for the practical test. Best of luck to you, Izuku, the girl said as she made her way to her seat. You too, Araka, Izuku replied, making his way to his seat too. He found out that he was sitting next to Kasumi. He sat down and greeted her with a smile. Kasumi didn't say anything, however, her mind was going haywire. He's sitting next to me, what do I say? Stay calm, stay calm. Stuff like this was going through her mind. The practical exam got explained with a few students asking questions. When the time came, the students got put into buses and driven to different practical exam areas. Before the exam started, Izuku had a quick chat with two people. One was the younger brother of the hero in Genium, Tenya Ida. The other was Uraraka, the girl he had met before. Everybody prepared themselves for the exam as Izuku wished them both luck. He activated full cowling, a technique he had made with the inside of Great Sage and All Might. When doors opened and the timer started, Izuku blasted out of the gates at 50%, faster than anybody else, leaving everyone in the dust. Even Ida was surprised by Izuku's speed. Izuku easily destroyed the bots. Not only was he able to beat them using his own physical abilities, he did well to show off his skills. He transformed his arm into a scaly one and easily pierced the chest of two and three pointers, whilst Ranga also easily destroyed the bots. He'd used his magic and other skills as well. Sometimes he'd help out people who weren't able to keep up anymore, and that gave up. He'd send out Ranga to save them, or he'd save them himself, getting them to a safe distance away from the dis dangerous. He was only speeding up. Izuku could use up to 85% of one for all with his regenerative powers, and even if he used 100%, he could just regenerate the damaged or severed limb. As the exam was nearing its end, it was more and more difficult to find bots as he had already destroyed a lot of them. Eventually, Zero Pointer showed up, but Izuku didn't run away. He'd destroy any bot that got close to him or other participants using different methods. When he wanted to turn back to the entrance, he heard a scream. He turned around to see that it was a girl who talked to him earlier, Uraraka. She was caught under rubble. It gave him memories of the incident ten months ago. He rushed over to Uraraka at an incredible speed, the fastest he had shown yet. The zero pointer wasn't that close yet, but Izuku couldn't sit and do nothing. With one hand, he flinged the rubble on top of Uraraka into the robot's chest, making it malfunction for a second. He summoned Ranga and helped Uraraka on top of Ranga. Get her to safety, he said as Ranga instantly started running towards the entrance of the zone they were at. The bot continued making its way to Izuku. I'm gonna stop you from wreaking havoc, Izuku said as he pointed his finger towards the robot. A ball of flame started forming in front of his fingers growing bigger and bigger as he concentrated more mana into it. He spoke, One for all, one hundred percent. The moment he ushered these words and activated one for all, the ball of flames became several times bigger and hotter. All of a sudden, the fire disappeared as it seemed to implode on itself. One of the teachers judging the exam spoke, <sighs> So much for that. I'll show, but nothing actually happened. Just wait for it. All Might said as he smirked. Black Flame Cannon. Izuku spoke as a raging Black Flame Inferno left his fingertip, hitting the bot and dissipating right behind it. The environment wasn't damaged in the slightest, yet when the flames dissipated, the bot had melted and partly turned into ashes. The teachers that were looking at this were all excited beyond belief. This power and control over it was fantastic. It Truth, it was due to Great Sage and All Might's training that Izuku was able to control his powers this well. There was only one teacher who was skeptical, not at the power that Izuku showed. He was more satisfied with that. Aizawa spoke. All Might, what is your relationship with this student since you seem to know what was coming? All Might smirked and openly admitted it. He is my successor, he spoke proudly. 
The teachers were stunned, and Principal Nezu spoke. Then why didn't you recommend him? He would have no need to take the entrance exam. No, he wouldn't have agreed to that to begin with. He has the spirit of a true hero, but he will not let his hard work to go to waste. All Might said proud, making his exit out of the judges' room as the test was over. Recovery Girl helped all the students who were injured and thanked Izuku for helping them go to her, as she was getting old and the distance to walk was difficult. Before he could say that it was nothing, the sage spoke. Master, it is possible to create potions to heal people if you find certain ingredients, Great Sage said as it started listing off some of the herbs and other things. Izuku got intrigued by this and asked Recovery Girl if she had any of these. When she asked why, Izuku said he might be able to create a potion that could heal people. She laughed at this and said that she'd humor him and send them over to his address. The exam concluded without a problem. Izuku ended up going home and talking about it with his mom, who was so proud of him. One and a half weeks later, a letter came into the mail. Izuku was happy but confused. It normally took two weeks, minimum. When he opened it, a golden disc appeared. Out came a hologram. Both All Might and Nezuko were in that hologram. Hello, young Midoriya. You will have to wait until the next part. Yeah, a bit of a cliffhanger, but it doesn't matter. Okay, second part will be either on Mephisto's channel or Noah's Stories channel. So, if you want to go see it, I recommend you go subscribe to them and put on that bell notification because they will continue it and then you will hear their lovely voices. Anyway, yeah, links in the description, like and subscribe, and with that out of the way, my name is the Dragon Lord, and I am signing out.